it's always, I think every athlete, it's important to do, you know, self-evaluations after every year just to see where, you know, you think you're, you're to look in the mirror and just realize, you know, where do you stand at, with yourself and also with the coaches and just to, um, just to get in line. And so those conversations were had with the coaches and after the season, just before the first um, portal opened and it just became in my best interest. Thanks, you know, just to full transparency with the coaches, that is my best interest that I should enter the portal and just to open some options. Mm-hmm. And I mean, how quickly once you were in the portal was, was ASU calling? Um, it was pretty quick, you know, with, um, with ties back to home, um, they were quick to jump on the gun. And, um, you know, during my recruiting process in high school, I don't think people realize how close of a, a choice it was between BYU and ASU. Mm. And, and what was it initially that kind of drew you to ASU as a high school recruit? And then has that changed? You know, do, do you have a different perspective on, on the program and the university? Obviously a different coaching staff and, and that sort of thing. You know, um, I think the, the biggest thing was I didn't realize how cool it would have been to play, um, you know, to be that hometown kid. Um, you know, growing up watching ACU, I think initially at high school, um, I was going to be able to start right away as a true freshman. And, and then obviously my decision to, to serve a mission, you know, BYU having dealt with missions and, you know, growing up a BYU fan, there's there are a lot of decisions to weigh. And then obviously these past, you know, five years to mature, you know, two years being on my mission and then being at BYU, I've been able to mature and just um, in different ways. And, you know, now this new energy at ASU with Coach Dillingham and his whole new coaching staff, you know, it's, it's pretty exciting to see the energy around the university. Mm-hmm. And remind me, with, with your mission, that got cut short due to COVID, right? Yeah, so I served about 15 months, and then I enrolled to BYU early. That's right. You know, going on that mission, um, what what did you take away from that? What sort of perspective did you gain that, you know, had you just jumped right into college and been a college football player, you might not have, have uh, might not have had? Um, you know, it made me kind of uh, reevaluate my love for football. Because I, I don't think it's easy for just any other kid to put down something they've been doing the, for, for their whole life for two years just to say, hey, I'm going to put this aside and go do some, something completely different, you know, across the country. And so it allowed me to, to grow and to realize that there are so many things that are, you know, I would be able to say, you know, if without football, um, I'm Jacob Conover. You know, I, football isn't completely who I am. You know, I love football. I'm a football junkie. But it helped me grow as a person and obviously grow in my faith to go out and serve, um, to go serve others for two years. And so it was, it was a complete blessing. Was it a situation where you were still trying to pick up the football or stay in shape or you really just wanted to have your full, full focus on serving? Um, you know, there's a, there was a promise, you know, as long as I put the Lord first and serving others, I would be blessed, um, when I came back. And so, you know, you know, obviously I threw a football around with my companions out there and it was, it was fun to tell stories and, you know, I am a football player back home, but you know, I realized that if I gave my full effort in serving the people in Paraguay, that I'd be, um, those blessings would return when I came back. Mm -hmm. You have a once a century pandemic happen. What was that like being in a foreign country, being on a mission and all of this information? And especially at that time, you know, we didn't really know what COVID was or how it spread or the seriousness and kind of all that. Can you just kind of take me through what March of 2020 looked like for you when you were in a foreign country? Yeah, so a bunch of what we do as missionaries, especially in, you know, we were in South America, is a ton of, you're just talking to people every second of your day, teaching and talking, and so it involved that in-person contact. And so we had gotten rumors from the locals there, they know this huge virus is spreading, we're like, okay, whatever. And then um, we have a a supervisor over our missions called our mission president, we got news that, you know, the whole country is going to shut down. There was no one anymore in the streets, we couldn't leave. Um, it, it, the whole country just went into, you know, this state of emergency. And so no one could leave and we didn't know what was going to happen. And so after, you know, a couple of weeks of being in lockdown, we got notification from the president of the country saying, you know, <clears throat> you guys are going to have this certain day at this time to be fully evacuated. And so we got clearance from the president of Paraguay that on this certain day, I forgot what day it was, but we were going to have buses to evacuate all the missionaries from every city to be leaving at the airport this time. And so it was crazy that 
um, working alongside with the church that we were able to fully be evacuated um, with the president's permission. Wow. How, how many evacuees do you, ballpark do you, do you think there were? I think there's, I think total there's two missions. So I think there's around 400 missionaries, 400 to 500 missionaries from the country alone that we were sent out. Your thoughts on getting to reunite with Sean Aguano? Um, I've always had an amazing relationship with Coach Aguano and I'm, I'm grateful that our paths have crossed for many reasons. And, you know, I didn't, when three years ago when we had won three state championships, I didn't know if our paths were going to cross again. And uh, I'm glad that we've been able to maintain a relationship to, you know, bring us together again. You mentioned getting to play in front of the hometown crowd again and being, being that hometown hero, but how much did, you know, sharing a sideline with Coach Aguano factor in? Um, I think, you know, it's, it's a big factor and, um, you know, I know Sean, we have a mutual respect for each other and I got to understand what his demands and, and expectations are as a coach. And, you know, he got a, a taste of being a head coach last year. And so that was a, you know, that was exciting to, you know, have him get that experience and to just watch him succeed and obviously ups and downs to be thrown into a, a forest fire like that. But, um, it was awesome to see him succeed and then have the chance to play with him again. Um, were you able to keep track much of what ASU was doing, especially after Coach Iguano took over? I know you were navigating your own season, but you know how how aware were you that how ASU was doing, how Coach Iguano was doing once he he took over, and kind of the, the efforts he was having. Um, you know, I think it's such a tight knit group of people who go to Chandler High School, and it's it's pretty unique that we all stay in touch. And so, um, going through the season, you know, keeping tabs on on Zach Bowers and all the guys who were involved with ASU that maybe were at different universities, Braden and Carlos, And it's just seeing they hit, we're all tapping in. Hey, like everyone watching coach Gorner right now, like it's pretty exciting just to see what he's doing and everyone's um, keeping tabs on one another. That's cool. That's cool. Um, what are your first impressions of, of coach Dillingham? You know, coach Dillingham, I was able to be recruited by him in high school and he was at Memphis. Um, and, you know, meeting him in person, then and now he's the same person and just to see him as a head coaching role, just to be able to see him, you know, as a OC at Memphis and now a head coach, you know, he's the same guy. And so he's brought in so much energy to ASU and to the people of, of Tempe you just to have something to root for again. And it's, it's super exciting that he's, uh, he's got his whole staff, you know, Arizona guys and just to keep the kids in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Have you talked much to Bo Baldwin since he was hired on? Yeah, um, hit, I directly started cut. I mean, the day I Monday I went and visited. Uh, I was as soon as the portal opened, I was at at ASU, and I was oh, super excited. Coach Baldwin, he had just flown in, and I, I got to meet him. And you know, we've started to build that relationship, and I'm super excited to work right alongside him. Were you guys? How, how much ball was talked when when you guys got together first, or was it more just trying trying to feel each other out and kind of just build a, a personal relationship? Yeah, it's so far it's been a personal relationship. I mean, uh, they're out recruiting, doing, doing all they can right now to um, get ready for spring ball, and so that the the ball part's going to come later. Yeah, totally. Um, and then uh, getting to uh, reunite with the Carlos too. What, what's that going to be like? Uh, it's going to be fun. You know, at leaving high school, we all talked about playing together, and now just to see it fully come full circle is pretty exciting how everyone's journey is uh, different but in, in all sense we've been connected this whole time and it's gonna be like we didn't skip a beat mm-hmm. has coach dillingham talked to you much about you know the quarterback room and what that looks like obviously you know trenton is you know back and i, I guess technically as the incumbent starter because he he did finish out the year and you know just kind of like what what sort of opportunities or expectations he had for you going into this room you know, I think at the quarterback position, everything has to be earned. And so obviously no, no promises made, but definitely there's going to be competition. And, you know, that's what college is all about. It's about competing for spots. And so I'm excited to enter the QB room and to make some relationships. Um, you know, especially when you, you entered the portal and, you know, you, you committed to ASU. I looked back at your, your stats and your accomplishments at Chandler and just like, you know, the 10,000 passing yards and over a hundred passing touchdowns and, you know, three state championships. And, you know, you, you did a lot of things that, that not many have done. Um, when you look back on your Chandler career now with a little bit of perspective away from football and away from the state, you know, just what are you most proud of, um, you know, your, your time at Chandler? Um, 
you know, I think the greatest blessing that came out of that is um, I got to be a part of one of the best high schools in the country and build relationships that have lasted a lifetime. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm proud that I got to represent the state and, you know, be recruited by so many people as such a blessing. And I hope Arizona state fans know that that winning is going to continue. You know, that wasn't just a, a high school thing. Um, you know, I, for myself, I'm a, I'm a winner. Um, I take pride in, in the expectation to win, and I, I hope to bring that to the locker room at ASU and to build some relationships and, you know, just bring back that winning expectation. Mm-hmm. It was interesting, too. I, I looked back at your Elite 11 class, and, you know, obviously there was Spencer there, but Jaden, Paul Tyson, it's now, you know, three ASU quarterbacks are from that Elite 11. You know, what? just what memories do you have from from that experience, and what did that – how did that help you kind of take those next steps ahead of your senior season? Yeah, you know, if you look at that whole class, you know, you've got guys who are in the college football playoff right now, you know, Max Duggan and Cade McNamara, you know, transferring to Iowa and all these guys that I got to compete with. And, you know, seeing their journey compared to mine, you know, I went on a mission and, and three years at BYU and these guys are getting ready to enter the draft. You know, it's very different, but all our opportunities of, have grown from one another and it's it's pretty exciting to see that you know everyone's getting their shot and ball now what I, I guess what can fans expect from you uh you know joining this program and this uh you know this roster that is now very Arizona focused um you know I'm just excited to be back in the valley to uh you know you know it's going to be super exciting just to to see all the changes that coach Dillingham's making just to bring that the energy that you know the highest kids in Arizona want to stay here. You know, it's going to be an exciting thing just to see that, you know, Tempe is where the hometown heroes go. And I'm grateful that I get to become teammates with a lot of these guys and just to build relationships with them, um, see how spring ball goes, fall camp, and ultimately get ready for game one and just to take it game by game and see what happens.